Good morning, church. It's great to be together on this Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, Sam asked me to preach part two of his message last week on uh, the victory that we have in Christ. And uh, it's an honor and privilege uh, to prepare our thoughts for communion uh, as we do that together as a family and really remember the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we do that together as a family. And uh, so let's go to God in prayer before uh, we start. Father in heaven, I just wanna say thank you so much uh, for this time that we get to reflect on your word and your spirit uh, leading us, just building our strengths and convictions on uh, the fact that we are winners in Christ, that we have won in Christ. We, are, we have victory in Christ, God. And I just pray that you will help us with uh, just building that conviction up and, and having the winning attitude in Christ. And I just pray that you will bless this time. Uh, help me, fill me with your spirit. Uh, allow your word to preach, to be clear. Uh, not my opinions and my thoughts, but what you have to say through the scriptures. We love you. Bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to share my screen and can everybody see that? Okay. So the title is The Winning Attitude in Christ. I really, really appreciate Sam's message last week. It was so positive and encouraging. We need to be reinforced in the truth that we are victorious in Christ. It's, uh, it's something that we have to remind ourselves over and over again, because we can get beat down by the world and discouraged, and we are winners in Christ, and uh, we are so grateful for that. And I want to take just a couple of minutes to just kind of reinforce what Sham, Sam preached about last week, and just use one passage of scripture that can kind of sum up what he talked about, because uh, it's just such a powerful passage to reinforce the fact that we are winners in Christ. But what I'm going to do is after I do that, we're going to go into the winning attitude of Christ. And I'm going to start with Ephesians chapter two. This is one of my favorites. You know, I always say I have a favorite and I have like a hundred favorites, but this is one of my favorite passages of scripture that really defines the gift that we have in Christ. In Ephesians two, it reads, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And, not, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so no one can boast. So powerful. So encouraging. And, you know, Sam talked about how we are victors in Christ. We have victory in Christ. We have won the war in Christ, and it's not from ourselves. It's not because we earned it. The truth is it's a gift from God, and because this is a gift from God, this victory we have in Christ, no one can boast. No one can say, I did more than you, or I was better at this than you. There is no comparison here. When it comes to salvation in Christ, for that we have one another together as a family. And it's such a tremendous victory. And it's, it's super encouraging. And what I want to talk about today, and I want to try to keep it brief, although I'm not great at that, is I want to talk about the winning attitude. The winning attitude that we have in Christ. I look at this illustration and what do I see? The winner crossing the line. But when I look at this, to me, this illustration is a worldly illustration. 
there is a sole winner that crosses the line and then there's second, third, fourth, and fifth place and so on and so forth. And this is not an accurate depiction an illustration of what we have in Christ. The salvation that we have because of God's incomparable riches of his grace and mercy. The truth is what we do have is this. This is what we have in Christ. Notice something. There's no one behind them. Everybody crosses the line. Victorious. At the same time, I don't know. It's a mystery. But what I do know is this. There's no second and third place in Christ. When you are saved and you come, you're clothed with Christ. You get baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you're surrendered for the rest of your life. You live a surrendered life. Jesus is Lord. We finish the race together, brothers and sisters. Together as a family. No one can boast that I came in first place into heaven. And someone else in second. Now, and this is another mystery. I also believe that like. The affinities have like some palace in heaven awaiting for them, you know, because they, the way, you know, it's like it's people have different gifts and talents and God will, you know, I, I believe that there is, and it's clear in scripture, how God has a room for us. And I, you know, it's like, how much do we invest in God's purpose and his mission and his kingdom, you know, but that is a separate thing, right? I'm talking about crossing the line into heaven. We do this together. And that's so powerful. Um, next. Oh, come on. Sorry. Let's do it this way. There we go. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. What does this passage show me? What does it read? What, is it, what does it tell us? It says, run in such a way. We enter the race, but there's a way. <laughs> There's an attitude, there's a winning attitude that we need to take on as we live this life for Christ. You know, how can I define that? I don't know. I have a definition and this is, can be like just a worldly definition or just a basic definition of what it means to win, have a winning attitude. A winning attitude is the mental and emotional determination with the stubborn demeanor to win. And the world understands this, but I want to talk about the spiritual winning attitude in Christ. That's what I like to talk about today. And I have three quick points, but I want to illustrate a winning attitude. And because it's Super Bowl Sunday, I have to bring in football course you know um i really appreciate armando's comments because it really ties into this uh lesson and that's the holy spirit you know but i want to i want to illustrate a winning attitude so i watched uh manny and mike came over with the boys about five weeks ago four weeks ago we watched one of the playoff games and it was one of the best games i've ever watched in my life it was buffalo bills and the kansas city chiefs one of the best games and I would like to show you the game-winning play. Take a minute to show you the game-winning play, just so that I can illustrate what a winning attitude is. The team is going to have three timeouts. So I'll replay this upstairs. We're going to play until we declare a win. Buffalo, you're still the visiting team. What is your call? We have a coin, heads and tails. Tails is the call. 
Tails is still huge, right? With how good these offenses are. All right, Kansas City will get it. The winning play was not some fancy throw or catch. The winning play was the flip of a coin. Why do I say that? It's because both teams and both quarterbacks had the winning attitude to make it happen. They both fantastic, amazing quarterbacks, both awesome teams. And whoever received that ball first was going to win. That's the winning attitude. It's like, no matter what, we are going to get this to the end zone. And I want to talk about the spiritual winning, winning attitude. I want to talk about this, about the winning attitude that we have in Christ. Amen? Winning attitude, number one, is focused. I want to talk about the winning attitude in Christ being focused. Or do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. There's a focus. You know, we enter the race, run in such a way. And what do we focus on? You know, that's a good question. Well, what am I supposed to focus on in Christ? And I think about like, what did Paul and what did the disciples focus on? Well, I think that the focus was on your purpose. The focus is on your purpose, your mission, and the prize. Heaven. And let me clarify that. I'm not talking about it's about like, oh my gosh, I'm, I want to run this race so I can make it to heaven. Yes, that's, that's amazing motivation, but I want to elaborate on that. But your purpose, and I'd like to take just a few seconds to really clarify this. Focus on your purpose. And I really appreciate Armando's statement. Our purpose is to glorify God. We are here to lift God up. And when, and when I, and I love the definition that he gave, when I see glorify God, for me, I want God to be revealed to everybody around me because of my life. I want the revelation of God to be seen because of my life, because of what I do, what I say, how I act. Focus on your purpose. Focus on your mission. Think about what Jesus asked us to do and why it was so important, you know, to think about the lost and seeking and saving the lost, being focused on that. And I want to show the illustration one more time about that. Um, you know, when you look at this, and when I did this Bible study, this illustration was convicting to me. Because when I look at this, I see everybody who doesn't cross the line. See, in Christ, as a family, this is us. In Christ, as a family, there's no one behind us. But this is the reality, people. Brothers and sisters, this is the reality. This is why the mission was so important to Jesus. Because he wants everybody to cross together into heaven, first place, amen? And then the other thing is heaven. I wanted to take just a minute to talk about heaven. To me, and I'm just sharing my personal conviction, the difference between heaven and hell, this is not a fire and brimstone sermon. I just want to talk about what heaven is to me. And for me, heaven is not being with my awesome God. I mean, heaven is being with my awesome God. 
Hell to me is nothing to do with temperature, sulfur dioxide, bad smells, agony. That's not hell to me. Hell to me is my father, my, the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit out of my life. That's hell. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's hell. It has nothing to do with the environment. It has to do with us not being with God. When you walk with God and you're intimate and you're close to him, we want to be with him forever. And that's heaven. We focus on heaven. Number two, winning attitude in Christ is confident in the Lord's victory. Confident in the Lord's victory. I'm going to read this story that we've read a hundred Hundreds of times, we're going to read it a thousand times, and we will always be inspired. First Samuel, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on the account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight for him. Saul replied, you are not able to go against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep, from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. Imagine King Saul's expression, may the Lord be with you, you, uh, you know, shepherd boy. <laughs> but David knew. David was confident in the Lord's victory. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you against, the, against you in the name of the Lord Al Almighty. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied, this day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down, cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. How powerful is that? How confident was David? And this is what I want us to think about. The lesson here is that a winning attitude is confident in the Lord's victory because the battle is the Lord's. But what I want us to take away here is this. What gave David such great faith and confidence. It was the past victories. Look at what happened. Look at the story that he tells when he had to go take a sheep out of a lion's mouth, protect the sheep, and then he grabs it by the hair and, and slays it. David understood victory because he had victories. Love this quote from Martin Luther King. We are not makers of history. We are made by history. David understood this truth. What about your victories in the past? We all have them. We can all tell the stories about how God rescued us and performed miracles in our lives, brothers and sisters. We need to cherish those victories because we know we have battles ahead and we take those victories and it gives us a winning attitude because we know the victory belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord and we are confident in the Lord. You know, Jesus went through all temptation, and we have an amazing high priest in Hebrews 4, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, 
just as we are yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I want us to remember that in Ephesians 2, it talks about the grace and mercy that has given us this great life that we have in Christ. Not by our efforts, not by our works, it's a gift. So we can approach the, gro- the throne of grace with confidence because we have this gift. We, we can accept the gift. Don't be afraid to accept the gift of God. Go there with confidence because God wants to be glorified. Number three, winning attitude is surrender to God's will. Winning attitude in Christ is surrender to God's will. Matthew 26, then Jesus went to his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell at his with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for an hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Jesus is an amazing example. He is the example, our Lord, of having a winning attitude, surrendered to God's will. And we've read this how many times? We we study this when we do the cross. But I want us to think about one thing here. When our loved ones let us down, when we're disappointed by our loved ones, Does it affect our surrender? You know, his best friends let him down. And I'm sure Jesus was tempted to be discouraged, but he went back on his knees with the joy set before him to think about us and our salvation, gave up his will and surrendered to to the Father's will. That's a winning attitude spiritually. And sometimes it's hard because we battle our emotions, right? We battle our emotions and people hurt us and people let us down, but yet we press forward and we do God's will. Let me go through a few practicals so I can bring this to a closure. So the practicals about a winning attitude in Christ. Number one, respect one another's different perspective. We live in a world, we live in a world of just division and polarity. And in Christ, we are to come together. Now, it's okay to have differences of opinion. We all do, you know, and it's okay to, you know, agree to disagree, but we're united. But the thing is, is we respect one another. We're all so different. My wife and I, who are unified in one through marriage, are so different. You know, but we respect one another. We work together. I want to encourage the church to really think about this as a practical. Because our sinful nature is to think that our perspective is right over one another. And that's not healthy. We, God, is, God is the God of variety. <laughs> he is the, you know, he is the, God is the spice of life. You know, he loves everybody being unique and having a different perspective. Everybody has a role in the body of Christ, right? And I wanted us to really think about, you know, really respecting one another and, and fighting critical thoughts. That's a, this is something that, you know, it's just like we, we live in a world that is so critical. I, I don't understand certain things like this whole movement of going to a restaurant and 
writing a negative review about your experience, like, you know, go on the Yelp and like, oh, the, I, the waiter spilled water on my lap and they overcooked my steak. I got to get on Yelp and do a one-star review and start ripping into this restaurant. What, what, have, where, what have we become? Someone else has that job. It has a, he's called or she's called a food critic. We've all become professional food critics. You know, it used to be you go to a restaurant, you had a bad experience, food wasn't great. Eh, you know, honey, maybe we won't come back here. Well, let's try it one more time. Maybe, you know, someone had a bad day. The waiter or waitress had a bad day. The chef is a new chef, get in training, you know. And, and, and we just give people a chance. Today, it's like, let's write the one-star review instantaneously. It's horrible. That's not a winning attitude. I, I propose a different app. Forget about Yelp. Everybody can put their one-star reviews. I, I, I think there should be a, one app out there for restaurants. It's called the five-star app. If you don't want to give it five stars, don't say anything. But if you have, if you give it five stars and tell me how awesome the place is, and then I'll judge the restaurant by how many five stars they have. I don't want to hear somebody's one star. Respect one another's differences. Uh, number two, have a vision for everybody. Have a vision and cheer them on. Believe in people. Believe in the best of people. That's a winning attitude. Amen? Number three, look for daily miracles and give thanks. Every day, God performs a miracle. What is a miracle? It's not Jesus turning water into wine, although that's a miracle. I'm talking about God's intervention. It happens every day. Look for it and give thanks. And then number four, final practical, pray for a winning attitude. Pray for it. Ask God. I love this quote. Prayer is not the thermometer of your attitude. It's the thermostat. Let me read it again. Prayer is not the thermometer of your attitude. It's the thermostat. So what is this saying? And I love this because of construction, right? But a thermometer reads the condition. The thermostat sets the condition. Set your attitude with prayer. I, I, I want to lift up the Davises because they're prayer warriors. And they have positive winning attitude because of their, their prayer warriors. Set your thermostat through prayer. I want to show you two, uh, two videos. Two quick clips, and then we will take communion together. And these two videos are to illustrate the evidence of a winning attitude and a winning church. Amen? And I will warn you, they're difficult to watch. They're not inappropriate. They're just difficult. And I want us to stop and think and look at this and see the evidence of a winning attitude and a winning church. First one, is this, the willingness to be picked up and pushed through the finish line by one another. We, we run this race together as a family, but we should be willing to be picked up and pushed through the finish line by one another. We help each other cross the line. And then the other one is the willingness to pick up somebody and push them through the finish line for one another. We need to be picked up at times and you need to pick somebody up at times. Amen? That's evidence. This is a race in Nigeria. And this is hard to watch, but it's very powerful. And in this race, a runner develops lactic acid and lactic acid buildup creates these intense, painful cramps 
and they they develop because they're exhausted they don't have enough magnesium potassium they don't they they didn't drink enough they're dehydrated there are a lot of factors why people break down and they can't run the race but this race i want you to see it's very powerful so so we have uh, the athletes uh, coming one after the other in finishing, but a great race uh, as run there uh, by this the man that has won uh, for this. Oh, oh, oh. oh cannot, he cannot go again. He cannot go again. He can roll to the finish. Legs are giving up. Now he can uh, barely cross the finish line. He I think the medics, I think the medics, he go there. He should rush quickly to his aid. That's the spirit. Crossing the finish line, they can crawl. You can do whatever, but just cross the finish line. At what spirit? Sportsmanship to the highest order. And now, oh, this, this is, is lovely. Wonderful. This is this is what sports should be all about. This is what sports should be all about. Yeah. Trying to be a keep him. Oh, that's the single champ brother, I think. Keep him away. That's oh, separate, can't carry him. Now the medics should just like, go, of course, and uh, help out. They should please, they should please not rush there. Okay. They should just run there. It's I don't need to say anything. We all have lactic acid built up every once in a while in our lives, spiritually. And our legs, our legs give up. But you have to be willing to be picked up by your brother and sister in Christ. And you also have to be a good Samaritan. How many people passed him? How many runners passed this runner? It's horrible. Don't pass your brother and sister when they have lack, spiritual lactic acid. pick them up and push them through the finish line. And here's the next evidence of a winning church and a winning attitude. Stubbornness and determination to glorify God. Even when we're hurting, even when we hurt others, we're a bunch of sinners trying to help each other be like Jesus, right? but we help each other and we're stubborn and determined to glorify God and do what's right for his glory and for his name. And this is the last video. for communion father in heaven lord we want to say thank you so much for the victory we have in christ lord jesus we want to take the time right now to say thank you for the blood that you shed for this the blood on your knees carrying the cross with the winning attitude and the determination to save us all the pain and suffering you went through we want to stop and say thank you for surrendering your will 
and given us the opportunity to be saved, to come in first place and to win a prize that's forever. The prize of being with you forever. The prize of never being separated from you. And you paid the price. We want to say thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Pray for the bread that represents the broken body. Pray for the juice that represents the blood. And we could take this time right now and reflect how we are winners because of your sacrifice and the attitude of winning that we should have. In Jesus' name, amen.